Gwynicor, Er mae hyn, ac yn sylw mae'n fan cael y saif yn ffyrcyn ffwrtio ar y rhof eiliog, ac os ohos ar ymgyr o yn siant, ac yn bert ag y gyn, ond cwlwyd ar sgôl yn eich, ac cwlwyd yn yn y halun yn erin a fel lun, ac os mwyta cwlwyd yn oi el y porc, ac os losiant yn erin. Mae e'n sy'n hwnnw dylai'r Sabina yn ei ar to have the opportunity of having this very creative community called Lodana Krochyokta gathered to celebrate with us slow Elapod, St. Patrick's Day and our National Day. It's such an important occasion, St. Patrick's Day, all over the world. And I recorded a message, really. I mentioned that it's a kind of a recall of a global family to celebrate a shared culture and history and heritage and language. And it's a day to reflect Two, I think, is important. Uh, the life of St. Patrick, himself a migrant like so many Irish uh, in, in our history. It's a day, how this comes about is that since we came to the Orson Ulter and Yasko, Sabine and I, have used St. Patrick's Day uh, when we take the opportunity of welcoming to the Oris uh, groups of individuals that citizens who are contributing to our citizenship and who embody uh, through the craft of their lives in their own special, unique way uh, the values and qualities that we invoke from the life of St. Patrick. Thus, celebrating together on this significant day those values that remain relevant and important in defining our Irishness, indeed, uh, through such work. Among those values that we seek to emulate are, of course, solidarity, friendship, which are, of course, given the community that's gathered here this afternoon, uh, such values are privileged through creativity and through artistic expression. There are qualities that I know and was thinking about it since Sabine and I have met you all, uh, that these have been the driving force in the lives and careers of those who join us here today performers and other practitioners representing the various elements of our modern film and audiovisual community and our wider performing arts sector. And of course our young musicians who have been looking after us. These are communities for which uh, Sabina and I have profound respect, great affection, and I have to say looking back on both of our lives that have given us so many friends. May I commence then by saying as President of Ireland that it gives me great joy and pleasure to witness the attention that has been given to the hard-earned success recently of our film community. Now, I was reading in the... (laughs) (laughs) And may I say and no taking from your applause at all. I am conscious of John Boorman's interview in The Garden in the last few days that say if it isn't celluloid, it isn't film. But (laughs) (laughs) the the fact of the matter, I think that, of course, uh, it has been a special period of time uh, with uh, Ireland received 14 Oscar nominations having been secured this year. It is Liam Le Cock, Elliot, and Well, now this success, for many of those will know this, isn't something that has been a recent accomplishment, that while it might have been a surprise to the odd few, uh, for those working in film, they will know that it is simply a welcome recognition of what they've been building towards over recent decades. And with the aid of government policies, with very committed artist support. So may I say straight away take this opportunity to, to warmly congratulate the recipients of Oscars at this week's awards for what have been exceptional achievements. Having, I must say, let me begin by saying, having seen it in RT, but very much looking forward to seeing it in the summer, I was so moved by the warmth conveyed in the award-winning live-action short film, An Irish Goodbye. Uh, 
Yeah. I, I do want to say that the relationships presented with superb acting, pace and direction had such a ring of authenticity that I could see uh, this is a direction for the future and I'm absolutely delighted that actor James Martin and director Ross White are with us today. With this, this <laughs> Now, film production requires, as you know better than I, the, assembling of so, the assemblage of so many s skills. And I have to say, in winning his second Oscar for Best Visual Effects, Richard Bainham was drawing our attention again to the often under-recognised technical achievements that have developed Irish filmmaking. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Trace Limele, Richard, but may I offer sincere congratulations to all of the Irish film community who received so many nominations. Colin Farr, Paul Meskel, Kerry Condon, Brendan Gleeson, Atholian. Vieg Shinnam, Kjol Kublanobadahin, Barry Kilgan, and Jonathan Redmond. And to all involved, uh, with on Colleen Kuhn, which made history. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Making history is a full length feature in Irish. It is of such importance for work in the Irish language. And uh, this is such an achievement in fame. I think it's a minlam, Kogod, Gasiana, Lish Sturhur, Column Barret, Barret, and Sturhur Photographiach, Kate Makala, Akas and Tash, Thord Kathleen, Catherine Lynch, to Hilyahur and you, Sonora, Strictly. As I've said, congratulating uh, Director of Photography, Kate McCullough. Ka uh, Ka Kate McCullough. <laughs> uh, Director Colin Barrett and Catherine Lynch. I want to thank them for uh, what I know is a time of celebration that they made time to attend our event here this afternoon. And I'm also delighted uh, that those who were involved in a film, I went to see it at launch in Arak, are here today. It was a... <laughs> Tatamasa Suluan and Kate McCalla Toshit Lin. Now, this is wonderful. I think it's again, and, and that, and I said about thinking, uh, uh, thinking of the future. There were risks taken in terms of for the aesthetics of all of that wonderful film, and I think they will be well repaid. Uh, it was a, another direction for the future. And I do want to recognise the performance, too, of Jesse Buckley in Women Talking, which we are our best adapted uh, uh, screen. Play. There are people gathered here this afternoon celebrating film because the present strength of a multi-skilled creative film community on the island of Ireland is the result of committed, loyal supporters of film and decades of work and indeed to be or have been any part of that great venture, which is Irish film, constitutes a great privilege. This year is the 30th anniversary of the, re the refunding of when boats gone on here and on our, the Irish Film Board. When I was Minister for Arts Culture in the Giltacht about 30 years ago, the refunding of the board was a set of decisions that I had the privilege of taking in 1993. But I have to say, uh, 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 which I, I, I do want to say, I believed then and I still believe uh, that removing funding of the Irish Film Board in 1987 was a mistake because Irish filmmakers had continued to achieve considerable international success, including the Oscar nominator for My Left Foot, The Crying Game, The Field, 
and, and, and the box office success with the commitments, which were all produced with non-Irish finance. You see, film and its promise in terms of artistic achievement, and as is now usually referred to as an industry, was kept alive through those periods by believers. The success of the projects I've mentioned, for example, together with intensive and most creative lobbying by members of the film community, such as Lila Doolan and the late Tiernan McBride and others, <laughs> was incredibly important. And I do remember, can you imagine a newly appointed minister coming down to the gate of, 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 of Leinster House and finding that there was a picket welcoming you? Uh, when, <laughs> they, they, uh, it, they knew the tactics all right. But, uh, uh, but I think as well, most importantly of all, because I was, bec I, I was become a minister for the first time, and I remember when Albert Reynolds handed it to me and said, uh, this is your end of things, that in 1992, the report of the working group on, Ir on Irish film, that was something that made everything possible. It was what I think, uh, I think it enabled me, uh, and it, en it enabled me uh, to convince the cabinet of the day of the case for the refunding of the Irish Film Board. The person who worked to that report, I'm delighted that he's here with us this afternoon, was Chris O'Grady. <laughs> 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 He was responsible for what was a first-class evaluation of the potential of Irish film as part of his work for the group. And I'm so delighted, as I've said, that he was here today. But also, as well as that, that he brought to it experience which you might call the necessary guerrilla tactics that would have to be implied <laughs> with the Department of Finance. <coughs> Refunding, uh, I have to say, though, in that package of events, refunding on both gone on was, was just one of a set of steps which I had the privilege of proposing back in those years, in 1993, uh, to develop and promote Irish film and independent television production. The other steps would be amplified over the years by some of the people present here this afternoon. They would include independent commissioning by television, now TG Carr, investment and training by the use of the structural funds of the European Union, the introduction of tax-based incentives of film investment, and particularly other measures that were needed to foster independent productions. But following that funding of a Bosco film quickly became a highly valued activity on a cultural as well as an economic level, led by what I have always regarded were a brilliant, enthusiastic, intergenerational set of film practitioners. They came in and they replaced others that we lost. And I recall um, that, that in the department in Mespil Road, the small group that were really working as background to this included my, my if program manager Kevin O'Driscoll, who is here with us this afternoon with his wife, <laughs> Nuala. <laughs> and uh, Mirani Breen is with us, and was my advisor, Colm O'Brien, the late Colm O'Brien. <laughs> and what it was was uh, as a very small uh, a group of people, and as I said, uh, uh, Chris was invaluable, uh, even in practical things like, for example, as you would have related to, to, to some of maybe to tell you about how it came to be that an assistant at every level of film production of what was been funding came from a conversation he had with somebody who was a graduate of Rat Mines College. And this, this is an important, that was background. And everyone has taken what was possible. And that is the great, great credit to the film community and the artistic community in Ireland. And that was all uh, uh, three decades ago. But I'm very conscious as well that both long before that, there's very rich history associated with Irish film as archives, such as, for example, Kevin and Dima Rockets work shows. And that heritage has grown richer and you have all been contributed to it. It has been stretched and developed by new generations of a creative and talented film community, innovating, using and responding to developments in technology. 
I do occasionally have said to myself, actors are important too. But it is a community that has sustained heroic play and it is being pushed ever forward. And more and more Irish films, as well including animated films, are receiving recognition and critical acclaim abroad. And that Ireland is now correctly regarded as an important hub for filmmaking, including post-production activities, is a real achievement by all those and the different generations who have worked to bring it about. And film, I have to say as well, when I'm thinking again, I shouldn't because I might get straight off my script, is that, <laughs> is that all of this work is profoundly contributing to democracy. It's very, very interesting that in that period in 1993, when all of this was important, this is the Irish people expressing the best of themselves and making it available. At this time, in the neighbouring larger island, Fulham was being attacked by right-wing policies and conservative policies, and it was having its result. And despite the full range of skills involved for successful bidding for film production, it was a challenge that was recognised from the beginning, and it benefited from advice that was given to us by a number of people, including David Putnam, who is with us here, and I'm so welcome. <laughs> David is someone who loves film and has created his own heritage and Ireland, and I'm delighted that he and his wife, he's now an Irish citizen, and I think this might be one of his, and I'm delighted to welcome he and his wife, Patsy, to the Oris Nukton this afternoon. But analysing then at the, uh, the future, that will always be very important. I can say this. I take the opportunity to congratulate Desiree Finnegan, the CEO of Screen Ireland, and her colleagues for commissioning a new report, a skill challenge for the screen sector in Ireland 2023. And I encourage them by saying, I read it yesterday. <laughs> uh, and I'm aware. So I was able to talk to the location people about the 45 hour, 45 mile rule. <laughs> but, but I urge all those interested in the future growth of our screen industries to take action on its key recommendations, which relate to such issues as skill gaps, the gender gap, removal of silos, and a better integration across higher education. When, you know, Variety magazine saying Ireland has become a capital of filmmaking in recent years, establishing itself as one of the world's most attractive production environments. Well, the fact that such a statement can be made by such a prestigious journal is due in no small part to the creativity and talent of writers, directors, producers, casts and crew that Ireland has now has to offer. However, this, this is a community we must never forget, that while it rightly celebrates, as we do this afternoon and on other occasions, it more usually experiences the fruits of precariousness and uncertainty. Poverty and security in one's later years should not be a characteristic of a life spent working in films or in any aspect of the performing arts. And I think building basic security into a life operating in the arts is a task that has yet to be properly undertaken. I think one of the most crucial aspects of the Irish film and audiovisual industry, and indeed the wider performing art, is its wealth of creative talent. And I think enduring pathways for its expansion is a challenge recognised in the recent report. And central to the role of Screen Ireland, every now and again I call it on board scone on, but I allow myself that, <laughs> has been the identification of opportunities for a development of support for emerging Irish talent, often through short and low budget films. And I'm glad they are represented here. But that cooperation between Screen Ireland, TG Carr, and the broadcasting of Thorning of Ireland has been an exemplary initiative, and it has been one of the most exciting uh, developments, and there are lessons to be learned from it. It is just such a... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it is also of such incredible importance that the foundational and continuing role of state initiatives and support for the Irish film industry be given appropriate recognition and even more important is continued, not just in relation to investment incentives, but in relation to training and creative interaction of state bodies. The questions most often asked when I had responsibility was as to the future. 
Commission medium and long term is incredibly important by governments. There are many who have been great friends of Irish film, and some we have lost too early in their work. And I do want to take this opportunity to pay my respects to the family and friends of James Flynn, who died last month and whose passing represents the loss of one of the key figures in modern Irish film production. Over the course of his career, James made a remarkable contribution to the Irish film industry, both in terms of fostering the development of films by the Irish film community itself, and in bringing so many international projects to this island. James's death at such a young age is an immensurable loss to the industry and to all of us who knew him as a friend. There are several reasons why all of the performing arts remain essential to contemporary society. The performing arts are a source of learning. They are life-enhancing, emancipatory, valuably critiquing our history and revealing to us in so many ways the depths of ourselves, expressed and repressed, the fragility of the human condition and our connection with the world we inhabit. I also too want to say that in thinking about that, the network of film societies in Ireland, which remain was and have been and remain so important in telling us how film has been dealing with such themes across cultures. The success of Ireland's film, audiovisual and performing arts sector then lies in the talent found across the island and we have operated on an all-island basis, but also on our ability to utilise successfully and with respect our natural resources, beautiful landscapes, vast arrays of of architecture, but such gifts of location are now amplified by the existence of the full compendium of skills that I have mentioned, acquired from opportunities taken and state-sponsored, and also the culture through the establishment of world-class studio facilities, such as Ardmo Studios and others. Expenditure on assisting film production, and we regularly have to keep saying this, makes good economic sense. The film, TV and animation sector in Ireland is estimated to be worth over 692 million, comprising 11,960 jobs, be it by way of direct, indirect or induced employment across the economy. There is very strong economic return to investment in the sector, as has been borne out by countless analysis. Yes, we've had to make that argument and show it as empirical fact. But however, and with our Marfocal Square, we must never forget that film or the performing arts can never be mere commodities. <laughs> I argued that in 1996 when I was president of the Council of Culture Ministers and Broadcasting Ministers in the European Union. It was a battle that I lost. But it is very important it, we cannot commodify our lives. Film is a powerful and distinct art, I think, from which, uh, is, which is built, I think, on the magic, yes, of cellulite images now, and I'm, I hear John Borman talking to me, but uh, whether it is cellulite or whether it is a, 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 or whether it is a card doesn't matter. The fact is, what is being expressed is the imagination, the memory, and the complex present circumstances of a people and their dreams. And in using the money in various artistic mechanisms in innovative and challenging ways, be it through script, lighting, direction, music, silence, film as the capacity of addressing and conveying the very essence of our being, of our human struggles, our sorrow and our joy. I do recall my friend, the late Alf McLaughlin, was among the very first to write of the distinctiveness of film as an art form. Filmmaking as an independent art form may draw from and build on skills and forms of practice that are present in the other arts, but is never reducible to them. Film production knowledge shows us how it plays an important role in documenting social history as an essential provocative part of Irish historiography itself, and the motifs explored in his dramatic works tell us so much about the culture in which such works were created. The performing arts provide a conduit to experiencing different perspectives that we may not be aware of or have even contemplated. Their capacity to examine dialogue, monologue, lyrics, sound and character 
allows us to empathize, fosters compassion, enables us to anticipate the joy and the grief of resonating with each other, participating in the performing arts, whether it be drama, ballet, opera, music, or comedy, helps us understand and even more importantly, experiment with what it means to be human. A truly great piece of art can transform the way we view the world after the alter the manner in which we understand our human struggles, enable us to create links between past experiences, present realities, and utopian futures. Many of those greatest artworks are those which have had the courage to take risks, to explore new themes or to rework traditional themes from new and creative perspectives. There are pieces which experiment and innovate, perhaps with language, style, characterization, to make exceptional works which truly push the state of the art form. This is what you all have been at at ensuring that the arts remain constantly relevant, challenging and thought-provoking, and films a crucial player in all of such performative practices and possibilities. So, as I finish, Shami, may I thank you for all of your different contributions to the Irish film, audiovisual and performing arts sector. Your contribution to the hard, to the hard one great standing which it has attained, the future you make possible, all of which is built on decades of dedication, creativity and hard work. All of your work is something to be celebrated as we do here this afternoon. And may I thank all of those who have met today such a special experience and enable Sabine and I once more to have such a celebratory occasion at Oris and Uchtron on our National Saints Day. I thank all the musicians from the National Youth Orchestra. <laughs> I thank the first aiders, and I'm glad that none of you have collapsed so far. Everyone, I'm great. Uh, uh, and I do want to thank the staff here at the Oris and those who've been assisting myself and who've all worked so hard uh, to make today a success. Uh, uh, yeah. And I, I have to say, uh, Thank you.